We're gonna be talking about lab one now, and this is right here in your uh, modules here under week one, <clears throat> here under exercises labs, lab one, or if you're accessing it from your assignments. Remember with assignments, if you're in student view like this, make sure you've got show by type selected and go to assignments. And here we are, lab one. So I'm gonna go in here, lab one, and it says, please download the PDF uh, file and follow the instructions. And then there's a zip file here that's got some uh, instruments that you need to use for today's exercise. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and open this up. I'll just open that up. And let's just go through this and take a look at this. now. Just as a shortcut, I don't know what the Windows shortcut is, but on a Mac, if I want to sh if I want to go ahead and, and go between two programs, like if I want to go between my Pro Tools and my uh, PDF here, I just use Command Tab. I hold down Command with my thumb and I hit the Tab key real quick, but I'm holding down Command and it brings up my application switcher here and I can flip between the two. And you notice that it's still got the application switcher here. The reason why is because I'm still holding down the command key with my thumb. And then you let go and it flips to the next, uh, it flips to your other um, application. So as long as you're holding down, I hit, I hold down command, I hit tab, and it brings up my application switcher, I can hit the tab key a bunch of times to, to scroll to my different application and then Boom, yeah, it's control tab on a Windows, great. Yep, so awesome, it's the same thing, control or, or uh, alt and tab. Is it alt or control, which one is it? So, y'all figure that out. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and look at this. So, it's really important that you follow all these instructions in, uh, carefully with these things. There's, there's, these are all done in order, one, two, three, four, five, six, and every time a student has a problem with any of these labs, Almost always, almost always, it's because they uh, did not, they skipped a step. So just be careful because some of the steps are at the bottom of your page. Please don't go too quick. Please back up and double check your work and all that stuff because this is like really for you to get better at this stuff. So this lab focuses on the basics of setting up a Pro Tools session. Your instructor, me, will provide you with the necessary files for this lab to complete this lab, launch Pro Tools, and perform the following steps. So. Step number one is recreate the new session by uh, going to File, Create New, which I've already done. And then create a Pro Tools session with the following settings, uh, Wave, 24-bit, 44-1, Stereo Mix, all that stuff there. So if I, I've already done that, um, let's just, I don't wanna go through that part again because that's like super, super basic and I, I that, that's pretty easy to do. But it's all right here. There's a, there's a screenshot here that shows you all the stuff to do. So there it is right there. It shows you how your window should look. Um, okay, it's Alt tab. Okay, cool. So uh, for that's for the uh, application switching. And then, um, so here's what your window should look like. You can see here it's a WAV file. It's 44.1 stereo mix, 24 bit. Make sure you press that interleaved button. That's not in these instructions here, but definitely press the interleaved button. You always wanna make sure that one's checked. Then open the new uh, track window and create the following tracks. So we're gonna create three stereo audio tracks, four mono audio tracks, two stereo aux tracks, and one stereo master fader. So I'm just gonna go over here, I'm gonna hit Command Shift N, and we're going to create, uh, what was it? Three stereo audio tracks. And I'm gonna hit the plus key here, and we're gonna create four mono audio tracks. Boom, hit the plus key. We're gonna create two stereo aux tracks. And you see how fast it is for me to flip back and forth between my programs? and then hit one more, and then a stereo master fader, boom. There we go, I've got this stuff here. Wait, uh, three, okay, three, this needs to be three. There we go, that got flipped around somehow. All right, there we go, boom, hit create, and now everything will line up on my window here. Now, it goes off the bottom of the window, make sure you scroll down. If you wanna make everything smaller, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna hold down my Option or Alt key, and click on one of these and select small, and now I can see everything on my window here. We can also go to our uh, mix window, hit command equals to go to the mix window, and we can see everything on here. You'll notice everything is selected. I'm gonna hold down option or alt and click one of the tracks and it deselects everything. And that way I can go ahead and move things around really easily. All right, great. So now it says number four here, open the import audio 
uh, window and navigate to the folder of audio files that your instructor provided to you and port all the files with the copy method. So, so I'm going to go in here, Pro, Pro Tools, I'm going to go to File, Import, Audio, which is Command Shift I or Control Shift I. So Command Shift I. And you got to navigate to wherever you put that folder. Now remember, I put mine into my into a you know in here somewhere. I know where it is. Mod two exercises, Pro Tools one lab, the lab files. Here we go, and they're all in here. So I'm just gonna highlight all these by clicking on the top one and holding down Shift and clicking the bottom one. And now we're gonna use Copy All. Now the difference is Add just adds them in without actually making sure they're in the correct audio files folder. Copy actually makes the, a copy of them within my Pro Tools session. Depending on what you're doing, you want to use add or copy. Um, in this case, I'm going to do half and half because I want to show you something later. So I'm just going to do half. I'm going to do half add. I'm going to do half copy like this. And you can see here it says add for some of them and copy for others. And I'm doing that intentionally because I want to show you some stuff later on. Once we've got all these in here, I'm going to hit done. And it's going to ask me to choose a destination folder. This audio files folder that pops up should be the correct folder. If you want to double check, you can, but believe me, I've done this enough times. You don't need to double check. You can just hit open or hit return and you're good to go. Now it's going to ask you, where do you want to put them? Let's consult our instructions here. Please do not just hit okay and get going because even though you can put them in the clips, if you hit okay, it's fine ish. But there are some things that we want to show you that I want to show you to make sure you know how it works uh, in order to, to learn how to use Pro Tools properly. So if you are just going to, if you just hit new track, it's going to bring everything into new tracks and it's going to be fine. And that's how I would normally do it. But I want to show you how this stuff actually works uh, really in detail. And that's why we're using clips list. So to go over here and say, well, how do we want to do it? Uh, number four, boop, boop, okay, it shows you screenshots for all that stuff. And then it's going to say, Pro Tools by default will ask if you want to import them into the audio files folder in your current project, which should be the correct location. Yes. Then Pro Tools will ask you whether you want to create new tracks for the files or place them in the clips list. In this exercise, you should place them in the clips list since we've already created audio tracks. So we've already created our audio tracks. So we're going to put them in our clips list. So bup, 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 bup. let's go back over here, hit OK. And now it says, Oh, this is new. Oh, it says uh, it already has the unique identifier as the file already in the session. Um, Pro Tools must stamp this file with a unique identifier. Yes, I'm just gonna I'm gonna hit OK. It's gonna ask me for every single f file. That's fine. That's just because Pro Tools is being super, uh, you know, detail oriented. All right. So now, if your clips list is not open. Over here in the bottom right hand corner, you're gonna see this little logo, this little signal here, boom, open that up, signal sign, whatever it is, icon. And now we've got our clips here that we just brought in and you can see it's the bass, mono, stereo says stereo. You can click on that, we can see, okay, some mono files inside of there and they're all in here. Now I want you to notice that I used add for some and copy for others and we're gonna explain that more later. <laughs> But Pro Tools doesn't see them any differently. Everything is just here. So once you bring them in, add versus copy doesn't matter anymore. So don't worry about that. All right. Uh, that number five says if the clip list window is not open, just open, open it by using that thing there. So we got that. Cool. Now the next thing we're going to do is number six, drag the three stereo files to the three stereo tracks and the four mono files to the four mono tracks starting at one one okay let me give you some help with this before you do that change this to shuffle mode and this will make your life a lot easier so we're going to pull in the mono and versus stereo files now i just want you to go over here and look on your screen how can we tell if they're mono or stereo well the way we can tell is remember the Stereo files have two uh, meters and they also have two pans here. So if I open these back up to medium again, so this is my pan right here, pan left, pan right. There's two of them. That's because it's stereo. Down here, further down, these have only one pan and one meter. Those are mono. That's how we know if they're stereo versus mono. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to drag my three, what did I say? Drag the three 
stereo files to the stereo tracks. So I'm gonna highlight all of them using not shift, because shift will just select everything. I'm gonna use command or control. So I hold down control or command and I click it and it highlights individual files there. I'm gonna drag these over. And once I drag them over, notice how there's a little yellow line. Let me just zoom in on that. There's a little yellow line that appears here. That little yellow line is telling me where they're gonna drag, where they're gonna put, boom, I let go. They're all at the beginning. The reason why they're at the beginning is because I used my shuffle mode this one right here to drag them in. I know I want them to be right at the beginning and the easiest way to do that is shuffle mode. I'm gonna do grid mode for the other ones here. So the uh, four mono tracks to the four mono tracks all starting at one one. So I'm gonna hold down command and click on these like that and drag them in. Now if I drag them in using uh, grid mode, you can see I can drag and drop and put them anywhere I want. I could put them right there but that's not where I want to put them. I want to make sure they come in right at the beginning. Boop, like that. And there they go, they came in right at the beginning. So you can do that with any of the modes, shuffle, slip, grid, but the easiest is actually shuffle mode. So let's just show that in shuffle mode one more time. Watch this, this is great. I just put them in, boom, bop let go and they automatically just snap over to the beginning. I don't have to I don't have to move my mouse over to the beginning. I can just put my mouse wherever. All I'm doing just watch one more time. I'm just paying attention if I drag them down, look. If I hey, go back over here. So you can see there's my yellow line there. If I come up here, see where that yellow line is showing me which track they're going to drag onto, which is showing me some weird stuff right now. That's the only thing I'm really paying attention to is just making sure they're on the correct tracks let go and there they go, they go straight in. All right, that was a lot of information about one step, wasn't it? Well, <laughs> welcome, to, <laughs> welcome to Teaching with Tony. Step number seven, after you drag all the audio files to the tracks, name the tracks after the files by double clicking on the track name plate. In future lessons, we will have the names automatically created by creating tracks when we import the files, but for now, we will name them, yep. So we're gonna go through and name automatically uh, we're gonna name them here and I'm just looking at the let me zoom in here so you can see everything I'm just looking at the track of uh, the clip names and that's what my track name is gonna be so I double click I'm just gonna move this over so we can see it audio one is gonna be called drum loop now I like to abbreviate things I abbreviate everything get used to it my advice is you should abbreviate as well the reason why is because eventually Pro Tools will start abbreviating for you meaning that when you have really long uh, track names it's gonna abbreviate and the Pro Tools abbreviations are just dumb there it's not uh, there's no artificial intelligence abbreviating stuff it's just it just shortens things randomly like weirdly so abbreviate yourself all right so remember our shortcut, command right arrow key to get to the next track, EP loop. Next track is perk loop. Or I think it's just, I think there's only one percussion loop so I don't need to name it anything weird. Uh, bass break beat. I'm off the bottom of my screen so I need to come down here. And I'm only off the bottom because I was zoomed in to show you all some stuff here. Okay, and then audio six is effects loop. And then uh, audio seven is guitar loop. And, and once you start abbreviating stuff, you'll start to recognize what your abbreviations are. You'll start to get in the habit of just using certain abbreviations. So loop is always LP, uh, drums is always DR, e electric piano is always EP, percussion is always perk, stuff like that is just, you know, beat is always BT, guitar, GTR, piano, PNO, stuff like that, strings, STR. Cool, so now we've got this here, like this. Everything's in here, looking looking pretty good. So after you have named your files, let's go down here to number eight. After you have named your files, change the tempo of your session to 90 BPMs by clicking the plus in the tempo ruler and entering a tempo change. Be sure that it starts at bar one one and it kind of gives you a screenshot here. So I can go in here. Now you can click the plus <clears throat> or you can click this red dot here, the red little diamond thing here. I could do either one and I'm gonna, it's 90 BPM already, but I'm just gonna make sure it's 90. Yours should say 120. So for example, if I double click that 120, you can see things shifted around a little bit, but that's okay. 
I'm gonna just change that to 90. There we go, 90 BPMs, boom, great. Number nine, change your edit tool to the smart tool by clicking on the bar above the trim selector grabber tools, like this, right up here, change it to that smart tool, there we go. Now, my advice is, if you have an iPad, please open up your notes in the iPad to this one right here that shows you how the clips layout is and have that open on the a desktop or table next to you. Have that open next to you because it's gonna be really useful to look at this when you're looking at Pro Tools to have these things right there. Or alternatively, you can have, uh, you can have this open on your iPad, however you wanna do it. It's really up to you. Um, they both work. But the trim tool here, uh, having it open on your iPad is gonna make it easy to just kind of go back and forth with Pro Tools. And this just explains a little bit about the trim tool, selector tool, grabber tool, which we talked about before. Uh, number 10, click on the first clip with the grabber tool and then holding shift click on the rest of the clips until they are all selected. So what that means is click on this first one, hold down shift, and we're gonna click them all one at a time using that grabber tool like that. Number 11, change your edit mode to grid and set your grid at the to, uh, to be at one bar. So we're gonna change our grid to one bar. Make sure we are in grid mode over here on the left-hand side, up the top, up here. There you go. And we should be good, that's number uh, 11. And it shows you screenshots of the stuff. Number 12, hold option to copy and click and drag the clips to start at bar five then hit Command D to duplicate twice so your entire clip length is 16 bars. Now, this shows you a screenshot here. So it's gonna look like, uh, well that's actually number 13 screenshot. So number 12 is gonna look like this. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here. Remember zoom is Command brackets, the, the brackets, the square ones like this. That is your Command key brackets. You can see in my upper right hand corner my little key caster thing is showing you what the brackets are. It's zooming in and out. And again, on a Windows machine, that would be uh, probably control brackets, I, I assume. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, all these things are selected. I'm gonna hold down my Option or Alt key and drag it over to the right. There we go, like that. And make sure you drag it so there's no gaps or anything. And then what we want, want you to do is hit Command D twice. So Command D, one, two, and now you've got 16 bars. Now, how do I know there's 16 bars? There's a couple of ways we can know there's 16 bars. One is I can hold shift and click it and it highlights everything and up here, see where it says length? That should say 16. If the ending of everything and where the, the silence starts over here, check this out, is bar 17, then that is 16 bars. Because remember, 16 bars includes the final bar. So the last number should be bar 17. And this is like something that took me a while to get used to because I come from the music industry, uh, music world, classical music. So whenever I am talking about bar 16 or something at 16 bars, it's like one through 16. And that's, you know, what it is. But in production terminology, bar 16 ends at bar 17, right? So everything is gonna be going until 17 and then it loops back. So that took me a while to get used to because the numbers are off. So if I want to do an eight bar loop, I'm going to highlight, I'm going to highlight one to nine. And that's actually encompassing bar eight as well. <clears throat> so I don't want any loops though. So I'm going to hit return so I get rid of my loops. <clears throat> All right, so next is number 13. Click on the first four bars of the drum loop with the grabber tool so that the entire clip is selected. Press delete to delete the clip. Also delete the first four bars of percussion, breakbeat, bass, and effects. So, drum loop, where's my drum loop? This one right here, hit delete, boom. And uh, percussion, this one, boom. And breakbeat, breakbeat, boom. Bass, boom. And effects loop, boom. Okay, so what we are left with is the electric piano and the guitar. Different colors, don't pay attention to the colors, pay attention to what the clips say. Number 14, place your cursor at bar three of the guitar loop using the selector tool. That means that I'm gonna go to my bar three, which is this one right here, and I'm gonna use the selector tool, so up top, let's zoom in here and see what that looks like. 
So see here, when I go down in the middle here, it's the grabber tool. When I go up top, it's the selector tool. So make sure you got the selector tool. I'm gonna click here. You can see there's like a flashing little uh, thing here. And I'm gonna hit Command E to separate that. And then that's off the bottom here, number 14 here. Hit Command E. Uh, oh, actually it says selected. I'm sorry, I, I'm doing it slightly differently, sorry. I'm not gonna use Command E. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag it to the left, or if I'm at the beginning here, I'm gonna hold down shift, but make sure this first part is highlighted and then hit delete to delete it out. I was putting into two different clips, but that's, sorry, that's how I work. All right. So one more time, number 14 there is, uh, place your cursor at bar three of the guitar loop using the select control, hold shift and hit return. Okay, that's just a little shortcut there, which is a pretty good little shortcut. Uh, so hold down shift, hit return, it goes back to the beginning. I don't use that shortcut ever because I'm hardly ever, because return puts you back at the beginning of the whole track. I'm never at the beginning of my whole track because I actually start all my songs uh, one minute in. So I have extra space in the beginning to play around with. Uh, so I don't ever do it like this, but there you go. It's another way to do it. But I also recommend you can just click and drag that way and delete, or you can click in the middle, hit command E and then highlight it, hit delete. So whatever you want to do, the shift and return is actually the quickest, but. Number 15, select from bar five to bar eight on the bass clip with the selector tool. Hit command F to bring up the fade dialog and create a fade in. All right, now this is a bit tricky because a lot of people, they highlight the whole thing like this, but you gotta read those instructions carefully. And I've, I've it, everybody always has a problem with this because they select the whole bass clip and that's not what it's asking you to do. If, you, if, if we wanted you to select the whole bass clip, we would say use the grabber tool and select the whole bass clip. But using the selector tool, select from bar five to bar eight, okay? So bar five is here, bar six, bar seven to bar eight, not to bar nine, to bar eight. And then hit command F and that pulls up my fade in. A lot of people, what they do, and and if I see you do this, I'm gonna laugh at you because I know you didn't follow my, you didn't follow this at all, is they highlight the whole thing and they hit command F and it pulls up this batch fades thing, which is not what you want. The batch fades is if you're doing multiple fades and the reason why it's like this is because we have fade in, we have fade out, it tries to do a cross, fade, all these things. Don't do that, cancel it. If that comes up, you know you did it wrong. Go over here, highlight the first three bars, hit command F and now pulls up your fade. Uh, I don't think it asks you to do any kind of thing, just the curve, yeah. Drag the red line until your curve looks as pictured below, which might be the default, I'm not sure. Drag the red line. Can we drag the red line? Oh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, there you go, you can drag the red line. I don't know why mine wouldn't, I might have a default cur uh, curve set up. So just make sure, you know, it's just standard. Uh, equal power and then I just grab that until it looks like that and you can move that so it's like more or less just make it look a little bit like that and then hit okay and now you've got a, a fade on here <clears throat> number 16 use the fade smart tool place it towards the upper right of the clip and fade out on the drums from bar 13 to 17 and repeat that fade out on the percussion bass breakbeat and guitar loops so that all the sounds fade out at the same time so what we're gonna do is this, we're still in grid mode, and we're gonna go over here to my drums, and if I mouse up to the corner here, like that, see how it becomes this fade tool, and it wants me to fade out. They want you to fade out uh, bar 13 to 17. So, <clears throat> that's essentially the whole thing. So I'm just gonna go over here, I'm gonna grab that and go over. I'm gonna let bar 13 actually play. I'm not gonna do the whole thing like this, and like this, and it wants you to do all of them. Let me zoom out here, sorry. I'm gonna zoom out, I'm gonna do all of them. So they're all the same, whatever you decide here, cause there's no real, like if you do that, that's fine all the way, but I'm gonna just do a little bit so we have a little bit of hit. And now they should all have a fade on them like this. And, oh wait, did it not do the piano clip? Uh, let's see here, just read this, I'm gonna read this carefully. Repeat that fade out on the percussion bass breakbeat and guitar loops. Percussion 
drum loop, percussion, bass, breakbeat, and and guitar loops. Okay, so not on the effects loop. So I'm gonna click it with my grab tool and I'm gonna hit delete and not on the electric piano here. So these are gonna be different. And now using the selector, let's see here, using the selector tool from bars 9 to 10 on the piano clip, that's the EP clip, hit command C to copy the selection and then place your cursor at bar 10 and hit paste, command V. Repeat this, paste at bar 12 as well. So on the piano clip, we're gonna go from nine to 10. Where are we? Oh, wow. Yeah. Like this. Now, one thing about this that, it, it's gonna be a little bit tricky. If you try to go from nine to 10, watch what happens. Check this out. Wait, let me zoom in on this. Watch this. Notice how there's like a beginning here and an end. And if I mouse over it, see how it gives me my trim tool like that? Well, if I actually wanna go from nine to 10, I actually have to go backwards. I have to go from 10 to nine and highlight that part like that. And this is some, like just after you've used this stuff enough, you'll start to learn little tricks like this. You'll never be able to get it to go from nine to 10 like that. That's always gonna be your trim tool. So we have to go from 10 to nine like that if you wanna highlight that bar. So we wanna highlight that bar, it says hit Command C, and then I'm gonna put my cursor at bar 10, using, it's all using my uh, selector here, and hit Command V to paste, and now it's asking us to paste, uh, the repeat the paste at bar 12. So we're gonna do it right here. Boom, Command V to paste that in. Now it says uh, select from bar five to 13 with the selector tool, hit Command Shift L, to place Pro Tools in loop playback mode. This is how you loop a section repeatedly. The loop play icon should reflect that in the transport bar. So I just keep mine in play in loop playback all the time. But what we can do <clears throat> is select from five to 13. So I'm gonna go over here and five to 13, like that, and Command Shift L. There we go, loop playback mode, boom. Toggle to the mix window by hitting command equals and start balancing the volumes of the tracks. Adjust the volumes until all the tracks sound well balanced to you and the master fader is not peaking in the red. And it should look like this, it should not be peaking. Now, I wanna point out a couple things. One, there's you're not even playing anything until the end of it because most of this assignment is about learning how to move things around Pro Tools. And to learn how to move things around Pro Tools, you don't even have to listen to anything. So what we're gonna do here is we're looping this part. I'm actually gonna loop this middle part here from nine to 13 here, just these four bars here. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, play. And it's really loud. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna turn this uh, down. I'm gonna turn all these down one by one. And let me show you how I do a, a, a rough mix. I'm gonna turn all these down. I'm gonna start with my drums. And I'm gonna pull things up into my drums, okay? So my drum loop is over here. I push play, and I'm gonna hit play. I'm gonna get this nice and loud, so I'm happy with it. The drums are my foundation, so I'm gonna get this going here. Now let's get all the other percussion-y things happening. And I'm gonna put these right next to each other, so I'm gonna have my break beat, and you notice now I'm actually deviating from the assignment. This is just, I'm showing you like a little trick here just to kind of get you started mixing. Uh, it's a nice little deviation from the assignment just to kind of help you with mixing stuff. So here's my break beat. Let's pull that up. And I'm just going to get it going until it gives a nice little vibe. I'm going to bring my percussion loop over next to my break beat loop and pull this up. And I just want to hear it. You know, I don't need it to like, you know, all the way up is eclipsing everything else way too loud. So I got this here, it sounds really good there. Cool, let's put the bass next. Nice, okay, a little bit of a clip there. Pull it down just a little bit. I'm gonna pull my main beat down a little bit. I'm gonna turn up my headphones a little bit so I can hear it a little bit louder in my headphones. If you are clipping your output, but you still want it to be louder, turn up your headphones. That's where you need to turn things up. Make sure that you're not clipping. At all costs, there should be no red happening over here. Nice, that sounds pretty good right there. Now let's bring up my uh, electric piano. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, 
Cool. Cool. Let's get that guitar loop going. Nice. That sounds really good. Now let's get this effects loop. Awesome. Now, I think you'll agree, that's a pretty good mix, and I did it really, really quick. I did that mix, it sounds good like that, in about a minute. It doesn't, especially with a track that's only this many, a song that's only this many tracks, it shouldn't take you long to get a rough mix that sounds pretty good. All of these instruments are pretty well recorded. They're all, you know, they look like they're all like just digital instruments. I would definitely put a compression on the bass to get that rid of that pop in the beginning, but that's that's me. I don't for this bass sound, it doesn't need to be super poppy on the beginning. So <clears throat> uh, I feel like they probably compressed it uh, at some point to get that pop on the beginning. For me, I don't want that pop for this bass sound because it's more of a smooth bass sound, but that's just me. Um, but we're not even using any uh, effects, anything like that. We just did a really quick mix. I'm using my ears and I'm mixing properly. I'm starting with my drums and I'm pulling everything up. And that's that's one of the keys to a good mix is you pull things up from the bottom. So now I've got a couple of extra stuff, a couple of extra things in here. I've got this one, I've got this extra master track. I don't know why I have that, so I'm gonna delete that. And I've got these extra aux tracks we're not using right now. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to delete these right now. Uh, we will use aux tracks in the future, just not today. Um, so I'm going to hit go. Awesome. Now, to finalize this uh, assignment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take screenshots of stuff. So take a screenshot of your mix and edit windows and submit each one individually to the submission page. So I'm going to go ahead and take a screenshot. Command Shift 4 on a Mac or Command Shift 3. Command Shift 3 does the whole screen. Command Shift 4 lets you use a grid so watch this i'm gonna use command shift 4 and i'm just going to take a highlight i'm just going to click and drag across what i want to what i want to submit this one here and i'm going to go back to my edit window and again command shift 4 uh, i don't need everything uh, so it should look like this like that if i use command shift 3 it's just going to take a screenshot of the whole window and uh, same thing with this one here whoops not that this command shift 3 boom and if you look at your desktop uh, all your all your screenshots just show up on your desktop and we can see those. I don't need the whole window, so I'm gonna actually just delete these two right here and empty the trash because I don't need them. And then uh, on here, you don't need to label these. If you wanna label them, you can, um, just with your last name or whatever, Grund PT Lab one uh, mix. And then actually, you know what? Label them. I want them, I want you to label them because I want to get you in the habit of labeling stuff. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this over into. Awesome. Glad you like the workflow. Awesome. We're going to go here to Pro Tools Lab One and hit Submit Assignment. <laughs> and it's going to ask me where's my files. My files are on my desktop. Pro Tools Lab One. Edit. Boom. And add another file. And Pro Tools Lab One. Mix. <coughs> Boom, there we go, submit. And that is gonna, there you go, you get a party, yay, woo! Okay, now, just so you know what I see when you submit this stuff, I'm gonna leave my student view. If I go into here to my lab one, it says I've got a couple submissions uh, graded, so can somebody already submitted for this stuff? I go in here to my speed grader, what I see is this. This is test student, and it shows me this, so I can see your screenshots like this, I can see them. I don't. Have, I could download them as well by clicking on this button here. I don't need to download it. Why is that not showing up? Okay. Well, there we go. That's that one there. And the mix is weird. I don't know. It didn't upload properly. That's okay. Whatever. I'm not too concerned about it. Um, but this is what it would look like here. And I can zoom in. I can check your progress. I can move around and stuff like that. So I can see if I need to see it in more detail. I can download it like this and I can see it and I can look at what you're doing and this is for, for most of this this is how I'm grading I'm grading on making sure everything looks right because right now I don't need to hear it I just need to see what you're doing because I can tell if you're doing things correctly just by looking at what you're doing we're gonna worry about the sound of it as we go later on but right now it's really important for these first few weeks and it's going to be weeks 
before I'm really listening to stuff because uh, it's more important that you're doing it correctly and I can see that you're doing it correctly because I can tell our thing if you're re audio, recording audio is it clipping is it like this is it like that I can tell these problems just from looking at your waveforms um, so that's that right there <clears throat> So that is the end of lab one. That's how you go from beginning to end on lab one. But in this video, I do want to take it one step further and I want to explain a couple things to come back to what we talked about before in the beginning. So remember in the very beginning, we, uh, I, let, let's go back to that step that I did. I, did, I think I just, here, let me open that up again because I just del turned it off here. Lab one, here we go. So if I go in here, Go back to the beginning, this very uh, intro step here where it says, if you want to import, the, yeah, hit number four. Import all the files with the copy method. Okay, so that right there, what we're talking about here is this. All the, how I brought the audio files into my session. Some of them I added in, some of them I copied in. So if I go back over here and I go to add, it adds it in, right? Or I copy and I can copy it in, right? So that's this right down here, add or copy. Well, the difference is, to see the difference, let's talk a little bit about what's actually happening behind the scenes with everything. And that's gonna bring us back to our notes for today in this Pro Tools file folder structure. And this is super important that you understand this. Now, I hope you can see my, like what this, diagram is supposed to be these all look like folders well that's because this one here is also a folder this is called your pro tools session folder so the session that i'm working on in in my computer is gonna be what, what, what was it? it was in teaching uh pro tools no oh, pro, production projects what was it called hold on i forget where i put it this is always, you gotta be organized. Oh wait, no, it's under sound. Sorry, it's under sound. Pro Tools projects. Yeah, Pro Tools uh, one, hey, Pro Tools lab, here we go. So this is where it is. Now, if I open this up, so, so just real quick, there's all these folders in here. This folder is the one we're focused on right now. See how this looks like a folder and see how my drawing here looks like a folder? That folder that we're seeing here is one and the same. And when I double click on this folder, we should see all this stuff in here. This is all your important stuff that is inside your folder. Now, a Pro Tools session is not complete without all of this stuff. And this uh, invariably happens every module where somebody tries to turn in projects with just this PTX file. This PTX file is not your Pro Tools file. This is the session file but it's not everything. I need everything. So when you turn stuff in, what I need is this folder here with everything in it. And I need you to zip it up and send it over, which we're gonna discuss in just a second. If I go look at this folder here, let me pull this up here up top so we can see everything on the screen here. We have our Pro Tools session file. That's the PTX file right here. We have the session file backups, which are, as long as you have your session open, it's creating backups as you go, which are great. It has the wavecache.wfm. I do not know what WFM stands for, but that's what this is right here. These uh, things above here will always be in this folder. It's always gonna have these things, but this stuff down here only show up if you actually have data in. So I'll close the session file down well, actually, here, let's just go look at another one real quick. If I look at this one here, um, uh, Vocoder Auto-Tune, you can see here it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have the, the bounced files, it doesn't have the group files, the video clips, any of that stuff. And uh, the reason why is because I never bounced it, I never created clip groups, so there was no clip groups in it. Um, and, but it, while you're working with the file, everything should be open here. Even though there's no video files right now, the, it's ready for video files, that's it. But once I close out Pro Tools, it's gonna, that video files folder will disappear. So my point is that if you don't see all this stuff, don't stress, don't be like, oh my gosh, it doesn't have a video files folder. That's okay, you're not gonna have a video files folder until later on. But 
a lot of the stuff you will have, maybe not the clip groups, but you'll probably have, you'll definitely have the bounced files and the audio files. So in here, let's go to the starred ones here. The ones that have stars are the ones that are super, super, super important. Never, ever throw those away. Do not ever throw your PTX file away. Do not ever throw your uh, session file backups away. Do not ever throw your audio files folders away because this is where your audio files live. And if I double click this, we're gonna see here, remember when we copied the files in the beginning? If I copy files, it copies them into this audio files folder. That's what's going on right now. So the ones that I added are not in here. And the ones that I copied are in here. Because when you add a file, it basically just points to that uh, file on your hard drive. It doesn't actually copy it into the audio files folder. So that's why I wanted to do this like this, because I want to point this out to you. I want to show you how this works. So if you want to make sure that everything comes into your audio files folder, copy it in. But sometimes you're working with really big files. Sometimes I'm working with movies and I don't want to add everything. I don't want to copy everything in with like the movie audio. If I want to sample from a movie, and, but I have the whole file on my computer for some reason or some kind of file that's like an hour long for like a field recording that I did or something like that, I just want to grab certain parts of it and then deal with it, you know, later. So I would add it in so it's not copying the whole thing in and then later on, I'll copy stuff in and that's what I'm going to show you right now because <clears throat> eventually you want to get all of those audio files into your audio files folder. So let's check out how to do that. All right, I'm going to skip this one here. Okay, this is brings us to save copy in. Super, super important. When you're using multiple hard drives for samples and audio files, data can get scattered around your devices. Before you send your session to someone, it's important to make sure everything is collected in one location. Different DAWs have separate names for this. Pro Tools is called Save Copy In, Live is called Collect All and Save, Logic is called Consolidate. So <clears throat> what we're looking at here is my session folder. I have my audio files folder, right? Now, right now, we're looking at my audio files folder, but that those audio files are actually in uh, different locations. Let's just go find the other locations where they exist. Uh, here, I can go in here. I got my effects loop, guitar loop, percussion loop. Let's go look at the bass here. If I right click on this and I go reveal in finder, it will show it to me on my computer's hard drive here. So <clears throat> this folder is, where are you? Yeah, let's do this. It's in here. Let's, uh, it's in my mod, I say mod to exercises. Okay. so. This folder here is in my SAE mod to exercises and I go in here to Pro Tools One Lab and then the audio files here. <clears throat> so this is where all my audio files started off and my bass, my drum loops, my EP loop and my, is that it? No, my breakbeat are still here, but I'm using them all in the same session but some of them are here and some of them over here. And that's what we're looking at here. Uh, Jalen, we're going to come back to that question right now. That's a great question. Should you always copy or does it depend? Great question. Let's real quick. So the audio files we can see, see here, I've got some folder there over here and some are over here and some might be on an external hard drive, wherever they might be all over the place, right? If you want to pull them in to the same place, then you need to do what I'm about to tell you now, because we need to pull everything in like this, pull them all in, boop, 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 boop. So collect all and save, save, copy in, consolidate, different DAWs call it a different thing. That's up here, different DAWs changes depending on your DAW. Collect all and save is actually Ableton Live. But with Pro Tools, it's called save, copy in. Now, before we move forward on how to do this, we just talked about why, but to answer your question, Jalen, no, you do not always want to do this. And again, if we were like not on Twitch with a 30 second time lag, I would ask you, when would you want to do it? When would you not want to do it? So we'll talk about it in Zoom. But the short answer is, if you are using your computer with your hard drives connected all the time, you do not need to do this. Let's go back to the notes. When you're using multiple hard drives, uh, so right here, 
before oh well that's yeah before you send your session to someone it's important to make sure everything is collected in one location if you are sending your session to somebody else to work on this is when you need to use this if you are using just your computer with your hard drive and you do not need to you're not worried you know everything is on your hard drive or on your computer then you do not need to do this because every time you do this it's going to copy all of your data and for a song like this it's only like eight megabytes or whatever it's not a big deal but if you've got a song where you've recorded a lot of vocals and you've got like let's say your song is like one gigabyte of data or five gigabytes of data if you're copying that every single time, that's going to destroy your hard drive space really quick. So please do not do this every time. You're going to use this specifically at the end or, or in the middle when you're sending it to somebody else. So at school, you're going to do this every time you need to send your session to your teacher. So anytime I ask for your session, you have to do this because I need to see your work. I need to hear your audio. I need to do it because if you send me something and it doesn't have everything in there, then I'm not going to be able to open it. Now, it's very difficult for me to show you that right now because I just I have everything in my, my folders. But um, just take my word for it. I won't be able to open it. And later on, I'll, I'll show you some examples. But what we need to do is we need to go over here to save copy in. So just keep an eye on this here. See how I just got those three here. Everything else is in the side folder here. So what I'm going to do is before I send it to somebody else, I'm going to go over here to file. I'm going to go to save copy in. So before I do this, I might want to save. If you want to just make sure you're saved properly, whatever. File, save copy in. Now it pulls up this dialog here and this is asking me what do I want to save? Okay, so I want to save my format session latest. Almost always you're going to do this. I want to save it as a WAV file. Basically the stuff that you did in the beginning, you're going to do that again now. Just make sure it's still the same. It should still be the same. Just double check 44.1, 24-bit interleaved, great. Now down here, this is really important. What do you want to copy? The main thing is your audio files. That's the main part. You've got to make sure that you copy those audio files over. That's super, super important. Now, if you're doing lots of playlists and lots of comping and lots of takes, maybe you only want to keep your main playlist. This is great. It will cut back on a lot of your, um, a lot of your ex extra audio that you don't need. So you can check this one here. All these other ones here, I wouldn't recommend worrying about these. These are more advanced. And it, it may, you know, this means that you have to understand what a root folder is. It means that you have to understand what your plugins, session plugins folder, like all this stuff. Don't worry about this. Maybe the movie video files, you're going to talk about this more in, um, in mod four when you actually are talking about movies and videos. So you might need to check this button, but right now we don't need to. So the main important things is audio files and main playlist only. This is is one of my kind of pet peeves because we are going to talk about this so much between now and week six that when people turn in their projects without this stuff I actually will dock them a whole letter grade uh, on this because it's so important and we will be t like you'll be like tony stop talking about it dude i'm like i can't i can't until you prove to me that you are experts with this i can't stop talking about it <laughs> so we're going to do this. We're going to hit OK. Now it asks me, where do I want to save it? I'm going to save it on my desktop. So I'm going to call this one uh, Grund Pro Tools Lab 1. Uh, there we go. You don't need all this extra stuff if you're submitting this to me, submitting whatever it is to me. And I'm going to hit Save. Now I'm going to close this session. Command Shift W or Control Shift W. I'm going to close this session. And look, over here is my what I just saved. I'm going to open this up. And it comes down here and now it's got my audio files and my uh, Pro Tools file, my PTX file. It does not have my session backups. It does not have my groups. It doesn't have all that extra stuff because none of that stuff is actually in this new session. This is a new session. The session file backups were part of the old session. So it's not copying over those session file backups. It's basically taking a snapshot of where you are right then when you do it and making sure that everything that you're using from all the different places were in there. The main part is this audio files folder. 
So I double click this and look at this. Now, everything, let me, hold on, let me just make this, oops. Here, I'll make this one a little bit small. Can I make it small? Yeah. And drag this up so we can have both of them on the screen at the same time. Look at that. So now, We've got the three loops that we had copied in are here in this original one, but the ones we added in are not there. But down here, all the stuff was copied over. So now if I send this file to somebody else, they're gonna have all my audio files. That is the main thing. That So when people open up your session, they have everything that you work with. I can't stress how important that is. But as Jalen asked, and that's a great question, you do not need to do this every time. When you're working on your session, just do a regular save. When it's time to send your session to somebody else, do save copy in, okay? So now what it looks like is all my audio files are in the whole thing. So what I would do if you're sending this to somebody else, do not, please, 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 I'm begging you, do not right click, oops, do not right click on this and then uh, compress this one and make a zip file like this. This is no good to me. This is no good. If you do this, you're dead to me. I'm sorry. We are no longer friends. All right. Uh, not true. Uh, but I will, I will remind you the first time and then more forcefully remind you later. But what we've got here is I'm going to right click on this folder. The folder is what we need. Right click the folder and then I'm going to compress this and then this zip file here, this is what I want to send to people, the zip file. Here, I'm going to close these out because the zip file has everything in it that we needed from before. Okay, so that's what I want to send to people. This zip file is everything that's in here. It's not just the PTX file. So that is so, so, so important when you send this stuff to people. Make sure you do save copy in, then go to the folder that you made and I usually when I'm sending stuff to people I usually just save it to my desktop because that means it's right there in my face you can see how clean my desktop is my desktop is not is not this clean because of school my desktop is this clean because I keep it this clean my desktop is always this clean and so what we want to make sure is that uh, make sure is that I, I, I make sure I'm saving I'm sending the right thing so I always just save it on my desktop and then once I'm done with it I'll just like, you know, delete it because I don't need this anymore and then send the zip file over. And this is what I would email to somebody or send over to somebody. Okay. So there you go. There you, there you go. Awesome. Oh yeah. Good. Yeah. Great. I'm glad to hear y'all say you do the same because that, that, yeah, makes your life a lot easier. And I, you know, once you upload this, see test student, I grade it, you get a hundred. Yay. Everybody's happy. Great job. Um, I, I don't take off, like, I'll, I'll put comments in. I'm going to, if you turn it in, I'm going to give you 100. If you don't turn it in, the grade starts to go down. I don't, I'll put comments in. If I see really big errors, I'll put comments and say, hey, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. But you're still going to get 100 for turning this stuff in. The projects, the big ones, the big projects, that's where I grade things point by point by point. I, I want you to work hard. I don't believe in punishing people for turning in incorrect things or, or whatever it is. Uh, so that's that's how the grading works with me. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording.